Hi, it's uh, Duncan Maidens here. Uh, this is the first of a series of videos to explain to you as a school how you can sign up to become a Cisco Network Academy uh, to offer the new Computing at Schools curricula. So what you need to do is you need to go and open up your web browser and you need to go and look for the Cisco site Netacad. So this is the Cisco Network Academy site. Uh, by all means have a good read around, it's quite interesting. It's used to deliver um, mainly courses in HE and FE uh, to do with Cisco Network Academy, so CCNA, IT Essentials, CCNP and courses like that. But we're now using it uh, within the Computing at Schools arena to teach computing curricula um, across the key stages. So have a poke around, but really where you want to go is from this page, www.netacad.com, is scroll down to the bottom and look at educators and click get started. Scroll down to the bottom of this screen, by all means have a, a little roll. Now all of this isn't going to be applicable to you because we're not offering the full set of courses at the moment for schools. Uh, just specific ones. So have a have a read, but don't worry about anything that you think, my goodness, what does that mean? And you want to come down to this next step here, which is become an academy. So what we're going to do is talk you through filling in this form. Uh, and to help me here, we've got uh, Shabazz Fruit from Heartlands Academy here in Birmingham. And we're going to go through and fill in this form uh, to explain the first stage of starting this process. Hi, I'm Shabazz uh, from Heartlands Academy. Um, I'm registering Heartlands Academy uh, for this uh, Cisco Academy program and um, I'm currently sitting on the website which is going to ask me a few questions. So the first few are the requirements that you have to commit to um, if you want to register as a, one of these Cisco Academies. Um, so it says here, do, does your institute have um, the classroom space for, for an in-person instruction? You, you may or may not do. Um, a classroom with computers for students, which obviously you must do. And uh, internet connection, um, which is faster than uh, 512 kilob kilobits per second. Um, you should be able to tick all those boxes because what most institutes have, have, have got those facilities. But then it comes on to these next ones and uh, these next uh, options, which are if you want to deliver any of the Cisco courses, which you may or may not decide. You have, you know, you'll have to purchase some of the equipment, uh, Cisco equipment, so that you can you can do it. So it's asking, do you have funds available uh, to purchase these equipments? Now you don't necessarily have to purchase anything because of the Computing for Schools program, uh, and, and a lot along those lines is basically you're just registering to use the service and 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 to be part of the the whole Cisco Academy if you choose to decide choose later on to do deliver the uh, the CCNA or, or the IT uh, expert qualification then you, you know you have to purchase it um, the next box asks whether you've got space to 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 deliver um, to deliver which um, obviously you might do and um, the next one's interesting. It says, do, do you have an, an instructor available to, for training and qualification? Um, the, the courses have currently changed, and you don't necessarily now need to have uh, the qualification to, to be able to deliver it. Um, that's right, isn't it, Duncan? Yeah, that's right. The Computing at Schools courses are not going to require instructor training. Clearly, we hope that you do know what the material's about, but it's not like the CCNA and CCMP courses where you have to be trained for the CAS courses and quite a range of other courses you don't need to be trained so don't worry about ticking that box right um, then it asks you some questions about your actual institute that you've got now you've got to use your professional um, business uh, institute and it can't be a personal personal one so I'm going to type in Heartlands I'm going to type in Heartlands Academy into into that box um, and then it's going to ask you for the address which is straightforward you enter the, the school's address 
as it is and these boxes here they you have to actually start with the top one and you have to um, select the country for the next box to actually populate so once you've selected your your country and your region it then selects your your region which is England uh, if you're in England and uh, and then you have to give this one a few seconds to to come up because it's, it's, it's an awkward system but by clicking around eventually it will come up and you'll be able to pick your city just like that so I'm gonna pick Birmingham uh, find it slow thing here. Well, hopefully, folks, you're going to be able to find your uh, your city easier <laughs> than we're finding Birmingham at the moment. But we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Um, laptop. Let's go up. We're getting close. B I R. Here we go. Birmingham. Okay, so you select your country and it comes up. If your country is not in the list, you can click this option and uh, it will it will let you enter something. Um, to just let you know your city wasn't there, but um, our city is there, so you can untick that. Um, then it comes to enter your postcode, uh, which is pretty straightforward. You also need to enter your uh, school website, uh, your URL for your school. Uh, pretty straightforward. Can um, I just interrupt at this point? The the purpose of your postcode is that uh, your academy will be located on a map. So make sure you put the correct postcode in here. Then if people are looking for CAS academies, uh, they'll be able to find you. Yeah. Um, okay. So then it comes down to asking you some uh, questions about your institute. Uh, Heartlands Academy is a public institute. Um, a public educational institute and um, our goal is to I suppose it's for diplomas or it's for other so, so again at this stage um, probably most schools are going to do this for teaching their key stage 3 key stage 4 curricula so obviously this being a global system it doesn't have GCSEs in mm. as such so just tick other for that box uh, and then it comes up how old are the students that you're going to be offering it to. Um, this one did throw me, but I'm going to select less than 12 year olds so we can offer it from year 11 onwards. Um, do you want to offer it to primary school kids, Duncan? Intention, the intention is eventually it might be available to primaries, but at this first release now we're not uh, contemplating that. So just do the less than 12 years. Less than 12 years is what I've selected, yeah. Um, contact de detail information is your contact details so you enter your, your first name last name email address uh, you'd enter your phone number uh, for your business or you, you can enter your private mobile number I, I don't know would that be acceptable you can put your private mobile number it's unlikely to be used Cisco don't generally contact you um, so it doesn't really matter most people probably would just put their switchboard number of their school um, preferred language I'm assuming would be English um, and then your network academy plans um, it says what courses do you do you plan to offer um, so in this one we'll be offering uh, students will be encouraged to enroll on self-paced courses 
and uh, other instructor led courses such as Get Connected or Internet of Everything. Um, they're the ones that are offering. If you're planning to offer your IT essentials in the CCNA, then you know you can you can select the top box. Um, how uh, will courses be offered to students? Um, I'm, I'm assuming it will be part of the core curriculum, um, yeah, more or less. Okay. Um, okay. So again, just to explain some of those options that uh, Shabazz has selected there. The Cisco Academy needs to track numbers of students going through this program. So as you sign up as an academy, we've ticked the instructor-led courses and the students' uh, self-enrolled courses. As long as students enroll on a course or you run it as a teacher and get the students to enroll and engage in some way, then it le the numbers will be tracked and we'll be able to demonstrate how many people are making use of the Cisco Network Academy through the Computing at Schools project. Sadly, without statistics to prove that it's going to be used, there won't be any interest in continuing the program. So it is important to get your students through. And for most people, you'll be delivering this maybe as part of your Key Stage 3 curricula, so it's standard core curricula. Don't worry about whether you are or are not doing GCSEs at this stage. Right. Um, so when do you plan to, to be offering the course? I would assume it would be starting September, first, beginning of the new year. Um, school new yes uh, so if we scroll across and select the fifth and then in this box to accelerate your process you would write computing for schools that's about right um, application and then you'd click submit excellent yeah. Right, thanks Shabazz for going through that. So this is the first stage of the process. Having hit the submit button now, your application goes off to Cisco and because you're a computing at schools applicant and that's why it's really important that you put that in that additional comments box, the application will be fast tracked through and uh, your academy will be set up in uh, what's called NetSpace which is the, the whole learning management platform and you'll get a welcome email from Cisco to the email address you provided above which will set which you'll then use to set up your academy and manage it and we'll explain what to do when you get that email in a later video okay thanks very much cheers